Welcome to the online service of Harborsite Baptist Church, a place of safety, rest, and resupply. We now join the morning service already in progress. How many of you have ever heard someone say? Now be open-minded about this for just a minute. You ever heard that? Well, let's just talk about that for just a second. You Something like that? Well, we'll just hang on. Just now, now look at this with an open mind. Okay. Now, what does that mean when we talk about and we ask somebody to be open-minded about whatever it is we're about to present to them or whatever we're discussing? What do we mean? Okay. Agree. Agree with me. That that could be. That is probably in the fine print in there somewhere. Right. Okay. All right. Um, I I like that uh, personally, but um, what else? Is that a good thing to be open-minded? Okay, let's just let's just look at this. We maybe we phrase it. We say, let's look at this objectively. No preconceived ideas. Let's just look at it. Here's the here's the reality of it. Okay, is that a good thing? Should we be like that? Open to maybe looking at things. Um, discussing things um, when they're presented. Okay, it does depend on what it is. Okay, well, we should maybe just say amen and pray and be gone because <laughs> if it goes contrary, if it goes contrary to God's word, we're, no, we're not even discussing it, right? Okay. Um, it's seen as a good thing, right? Um, as far as one being open-minded, is they're, they're willing to consider new ideas without prejudice, okay? Now, again, you have to balance that. You have to think rationally, you know, um, biblically, and so forth. We understand that. But in Proverbs, well, let me just ask this question first. Would it be considered a, a, good, a good trait to be properly open-minded, able to discuss things, okay? Because uh, maybe, maybe it is that you, you come to this reality, I know I have a long time ago, I don't know all there is to know about everything, okay? And if somebody says, hey, pastor, what about this? Okay, well, let's talk about it. I can, I can hear what you're going to say. I can listen to what you're going to say. If it is something that, um, you know, might be beneficial to our church, might be beneficial to, you know, getting the gospel out, whatever it might be, um, hey, let's do that. But if, it's, if you're going to say, like I had a teenager come to me years ago, we just sang that song, God, He's Able, okay, he asked this question. He said, is there anything God can't do? Well, could God create a rock big enough, so big that he couldn't pick it up? And of course you say no. And well, you just said that God could do anything, but then you just said that God can't create a rock big enough that he can't pick it up. So what about that? Huh, 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 huh? And I said, I'm not going to even answer the question. I'm going to just tell you, like Paul told Timothy, to, to stay away from foolish and unlearned questions, which gender strife. Okay, so there's, you know, that. But I, I think we could probably all agree to, su- to some point, some um, way of, of looking at this. It, it is generally a good idea to hear things because he that answereth a matter before he heareth it, that's in the book of Proverbs, by the way, it is f- shame and folly. Okay, if you just say, you know, somebody presents something to you and you just jump to a conclusion, no way, no how, no, 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 no. Okay, wait a minute. Hang on. Let's look at this. That's a good thing. But in Proverbs, being open minded or simple, we're going to look at that person this morning. It's not a good thing. Okay, because it means being naive. How many of you have ever been naive about something? I can remember when I was about eight years old, 
there was an, an older teenager. Well, I wasn't a teenager, so there was, he was a teenager. I think he was a junior, maybe a senior in high school. Um, came into our neighborhood, and I'm not sure what connection he had with any of the other children on our court. I, I grew up on a cul-de-sac, and, you know, that, that was kind of our hood, you know. <laughs> And we knew when people, people came into the hood, you know, that kind of thing. So this guy came in, and um, we got to talking to him. We got to playing basketball or something like that. And he goes, hey, you want to you, you make $5? Like, you know, when I was eight years old, that was in 1970. Um, now you know how old I am. Um, but $5, I didn't have $5, so sure, why not? He goes, okay, let me show you how to make $5, and he took a matchbook out, a book of matches, one of those boxes of matches, and he took two matches and stuck them head down on the, you know, the real rough parts, you know, the striker parts of that, and then he balanced another match on top of these other matches, okay? And he said, if you can take your finger and break that top match, I'll give you $5. So me and my little eight-year-old mind was like, how hard can that be, right? Matches are not real, real hard to break. Anybody can break matches, you know. I Even as an eight-year-old, I'd broken matches before, you know, trying to get them started and, and lit and that kind of thing. It was like, okay, we can do that. There's a friend, couple friends of mine. We're gathered around this guy, you know, and, and uh, we're, we're gonna, gonna, one of us is going to make $5, and maybe all three of us will make $5 because he said, you know, you can start and you can try and so on and so forth. I got that kind of money. And um, so I went ahead, and the first time I tried it, the top match fell off, okay? He said, no, 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 you got to be real, you got to be real steady, okay, when you do that. And I tried it, and the whole thing fell apart, okay? He goes, no, no. What you got to do, you got to squeeze real hard on the, the heads of the matches, on the ones on the side, so you can, you know, you can get that because you don't want them to move and that kind of thing because I did that, and you know what happened? I lit myself on fire, okay? I ended up burning the, the, the side of my thumb, you know? It wasn't like first degree, but it wasn't third degree. So I guess there's maybe one and a half or two degree in there. And it's like, ah, oh, man. And I said, where's my $5? And he goes, no, you didn't break that match. Why did that happen? Because I was naive, right? I was open-minded, okay, is what the word actually means. The basic meaning of the Hebrew word simple, and you're in Proverbs 1. Did you hold your finger there? Yeah. And also Proverbs 7, but look at Proverbs 1 and verse number 4 says to give subtlety to the simple. Proverbs 7 and verse 7 says, and beheld among the simple ones. Okay? What does that mean? It's open minded, literally means open minded. And the idea is they're open minded in the sense of failing to discriminate between right and wrong. Proverbs, again, demonstrates that being open minded is also only a temporary thing. Okay? We're going to get into that a little bit this morning. Because the open-minded will soon embrace, if they remain open-minded in this sense, they soon embrace every wrong and unwise idea that comes along. I want to preach a message to you this morning that I have entitled, Better to be wise than open-minded. Better to be wise than open-minded. Let's pray. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity that we have to look into your word now, and we would ask that you would help us to understand these principles. Help us also to remember, Lord, that Proverbs was designed 
to prevent us from getting into trouble. It's designed to prevent troubles, not just fix them. Although Proverbs can be applied, the principles therein can be applied to fixing the problems that we find ourselves in. And we could all attest to the fact that it's much better to not get into a problem and a difficulty because we were discerning, we were wise, than it is to extricate ourselves from the problem and the difficulty and the circumstance that certainly we're, we're not glad that we're in. We pray your blessings upon our time now. Remove any of the distractions that have come our way, we pray. Help us to understand what it means, again, not only to be open-minded, to be simple, as Proverbs mentions, but how to combat it by being wise. We ask your blessings on our time now, in Jesus' name, amen. Better to be wise than open-minded. Now, it is possible to be open-minded in a good sense, okay? Let's start there. You're already, I hope you held your finger in Psalm 19. Look, if you will, at verse number 7. This Psalm of David says, The law of the Lord. Now, what is that? What is that a general description of? The word, the word of God, okay? The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure. Now, notice, making wise the simple, okay? Now, each one of us starts out that way, simple, okay? Just like I, as an eight-year-old boy, okay? Uh, I can remember later in my life, and, and again, I, I was somewhat open-minded uh, to different suggestions. I, I think I've used the illustration before. I spent uh, a summer with my grandparents about that same time. I was maybe 10 years old at the oldest or so, and um, I jumped off a barn. Friend of mine, he did it, came away, no problems. I'm probably in as good a physical shape and as acrobatic as he is, so why not? It didn't turn out so well. But we all do that. We all start out that way. We all start out not really knowing anything about how to be wise or anything like that. We take things at face value often, and when older people, just like this teenager that came into our hood, right, said, hey, you can do this. He's older. He's more experienced. Surely he knows, right? He had our best interest in mind. He really wanted to give us $5, right? No, he didn't. Now, I know that now, but I didn't know that then. But here is a person in Psalm 19 who is open-minded about God's word. And, and wants to know, wants to learn, is open to the idea of learning how to be wise as it's based on and presented in God's word. Now, that is a good thing, is it not? Hello? When you present the gospel to somebody, is that a good thing if they are willing to listen and consider what you have to say? Yeah. Sure it is. Absolutely it is. Each one of us, those of us that know Jesus Christ is our personal Savior, we've been in that spot, have we not? When the gospel was presented, we're open to understanding what it means and considering what it means, and then also thinking about the consequences of accepting or rejecting right? What's the consequence of accepting Jesus Christ as your personal Savior? Heaven, ultimately. Pardon from your sin debt. Blessing, right? What's the consequence of rejecting Jesus Christ as your personal Savior? 
you end up getting burned, okay? She, I, I saw what she did there, exactly, all right? And it's not just a thumb either, right? You'll be tormented in that flame, exactly. But it is possible to be open-minded in a good sense. But Proverbs, however, presents one who is open-minded in a dangerous sense. You're holding your fingers in Proverbs 1. Again, let me read verse 4 to you. It says, To give subtlety to the simple, to the young man, knowledge and discretion. Proverbs 7 and verse 7 says, For at the window of my house, verse 6 actually, I looked through my casement and beheld among the simple ones and discerned among the youths a young man void of understanding. What is that? Well, it is a dangerous sense to be open-minded, to be simple, naive, due to youth. Okay, again, as an eight-year-old, I didn't understand all that. I didn't understand the physics behind what was involved. Okay, I came to learn very quickly. Exactly. How many of you have ever, you know, you talk to somebody and, and what do you think about this? And, and well, you'll only do that one time and then you'll learn. Okay. Hopefully, Hopefully the school of hard knocks. Exactly. Hopefully you'll learn. Okay. Unfortunately, the simple, and we'll get into this, the simple doesn't learn from experience. It doesn't matter how many times it happens. He just remains open-minded and simple. But both of these Proverbs, in, verse, or in Proverbs 1 and Proverbs 7 that we just read, tie the idea of open-mindedness to youth. Okay, That's one of the reasons why, as parents, we should be presenting as soon as possible the principles that we find in God's Word to our children. I was talking to an evangelist friend of mine who was mentioning a pastor that he knew uh, out west somewhere that they, and we've done this as well in the past, um, you know, there's Sunday school material out there, you know, for Sunday school programs and different things like that, and, and we've used uh, a lot of that in the past in our ministry and whatnot, and, and um, this, this pastor got to reviewing all of, some of the material that they were using and what was available out there and so on. And he just decided, he said, we're doing away with all that. We are not going to use any outside Sunday school material. And this evangelist friend of mine who was preaching a week of revival at this man's church said, well, what are you going to do? And the pastor looked at him kind of surprised and said, we're going to teach them doctrine. We're going to teach them doctrine. And my evangelist friend said, oh, so in your youth group, you know, junior high, senior high? And he said, no. From K4 on up. And my evangelist friend looked at him kind of aghast as well and said, you mean to tell me that you're going to try and teach four-year-olds doctrine? And the pastor said, why not? When do you start? How old are they to understand? No, no. No, no. Our granddaughter is not two years old. And she understands, no, no. Is that a biblical principle? Is that doctrinal? The answer to the question is, uh-huh. So it's our responsibility as parents, as, as grandparents, to teach these things to our children, our grandchildren, our great-grandchildren. I can remember different times sitting in the audience down in North Carolina at the wilds as we would take teenagers from our church down periodically for a week of camp and whatever speaker was preaching and that kind of thing. And, and it never ceased to amaze me how 
whoever he was that was preaching for the week of camp at the wilds, he must have been listening to what I was saying because some of what came out of his mouth had come out of my mouth within the last year. Isn't that amazing? Great minds think alike, don't they? And I was asking that question of a friend of mine who was there, and I said, I got something. I want to talk to you about something. I said, you've been talking to my wife? He's like, no. Why? And I said, because what you said on this particular evening, at this particular time, at this week at camp, I had said the exact same thing not six weeks ago. And he just chuckled. He said, it's a different voice saying the same thing. And parents, you know how this is, because we're all parents, most of us. There's a few that aren't yet. Parents often start teaching their children when they're very small certain principles. Hopefully Christian parents start very small teaching their children biblical principles. And sometimes for whatever reason, because of that parental child relationship, sometimes we just don't get it when we're children. Mom and daddy said it, but nah, it's open to discussion, right? But if grandma and grandpa or great grandma and great grandpa say the same thing, and I hear it at church, and maybe I go to camp and I hear them saying the same thing, what does that do for me? It gives me wisdom. It makes an impact in my heart and in my life. Proverbs 1, let's go back there. Look at verse number 2. Here is the purpose of the entire book of Proverbs in these verses. It says, To know wisdom and instruction, to perceive the words of understanding, to receive the instruction of wisdom, justice, judgment, equity, to give subtlety to the simple, to the young man knowledge and discretion, now notice this, a wise man will hear and will increase knowledge or increase learning. And a man of understanding shall attain to wise counsels to understand a proverb, the interpretation and the words of the wise and their dark sayings. What is the purpose of Proverbs? Is to give wisdom and instruction to what group of people? The simple, the open minded. The naive, okay? But if they remain that way due to youth, and I've already mentioned we start out that way, but hopefully when a child gets older and as a person gets older, hopefully what happens? The older you get, the smarter you get, the wiser you get, right? Hopefully, but not always. Quite honestly, we've all come in contact with, because we've, none of us are like this. We've all come in contact with older people, people who have gotten older, who are just as ignorant and naive and open-minded And foolish, I'm trying to be kind, as they were when they were children. Maybe even worse than when they were children, right? There, we are, uh, uh, yes, and, and that lumps us all into the same, the same lump, right? We're all sinners, exactly. But verse number four in Proverbs 1 talks about giving subtlety that's prudence okay giving prudence to the simple the youth mentioned here is not to be criticized okay don't criticize him because he's young you should support him you should encourage him you should help him and direct him into realizing that the help that he needs to gain wisdom where is it found 
Where will children, where will teenagers in our day and age, even people of all ages, where do they get wisdom in our day and age? Where do they get it? They get it from their friends. Social media. TikTok. Right? Uh, Facebook, Google, whatever. Okay? They get it from all other sources, but the one that is the only source of absolute truth available to us. So is it any wonder why we have several generations now of simple, open-minded, naive, foolish people in this world, in our country, even in the church at large? even amongst Christian people. Now, it is also a possibility to be open-minded, not in, in a dangerous sense as a youth, okay, but also due to stubbornness. Look at Proverbs 1 down to verse 22. We looked at this passage of Scripture recently, but let me just bring it to your attention once again. Solomon says, how long? You simple, you open-minded, will you love simplicity? And the scorners delight in their scorning and fools hate knowledge. How, how long, how long is it going to take before you finally get it? What do I have to do to get you to understand that where you are right now, you are headed down a road and it is he- you are headed to destruction, period. End of story, mic drop. You can go on in the way that you're going, but you are going to grieve your family. There is not going to be any blessing in it. You are never going to be successful in the way you're going. How long do I have to stand and shout from the highest point rooftop and be as loud as I possibly can until you get it how long that brings us to an interesting question does it not how long do we continue to give that kind of guidance to somebody who has over time periodically and regularly shown that they are not interested in what you have to say. And subsequently, they, they are, they're, they're, it's not just not listening to you, but if you're giving godly principle, what are they not listening to? They're not listening to God. They have said, I am not interested by their actions, by their words, by their continued folly, by their continued open mindedness to go on in the way that they're going. They have shown you very unequivocally they are not interested. How far do you go to continue to give that kind of counsel? Is there ever a time when you say, I'm done? I would submit to you as you read through the book of Jeremiah, Jeremiah, the weeping prophet, was told by God that judgment is coming upon this people for their sin. And Jeremiah wept and begged God not to judge Israel the way he was telling Jeremiah that he was going to judge Israel. And Jeremiah was told by God Almighty himself, don't continue to pray for these people because I have decided that I am going to judge them. And there's nothing you can do or say that will change it. And what happened? They went into captivity, not once, but twice. God set them aside. He has still done that. They are still his most favored people, his favorites, his chosen. 
but Israel is so far from God, they don't even believe. They do not recognize Jesus Christ as their Messiah. He came, he died for them, and yet they still reject him. There comes a time, as much as it breaks your heart, that praying and asking and weeping and counseling and, and, and fighting even, an open-minded, simple fool is no good. It does you no good. You might as well just stop. You're wasting your breath. You're wasting your time. And it will break your heart. When you see and when you know I, what's coming, you see it, you hear it, you know it, you've read it, and God is just, he is merciful, he is gracious, but he will continue to always judge and convict, and ultimately act upon rebellion and disobedience. Romans one twenty eight. Exactly, he gave them over to these things. It's possible to be open minded in a dangerous sense. The question again in Proverbs one twenty two is how long. And it expresses totally exhausted patience. How many of you have just totally been exhausted? Your patience, you, you, you struck my last nerve, it just snapped. Oh, yes. Yes. Definitely. I can remember different times. <laughs> try to be patient with your boys. Try to be patient with your kids. And you tell them, have we not? Go to your room. And see, when children hear that, they know something's coming, right? And they get real obedient, and they get real contrite, and they start begging, and they even cry, and they say, please, no, 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 no. Nope, that's it. We're, we're past that. Go to your room. I'll be there in a minute. True. We don't instill fear. We don't like to do that. But what is verse 7 of Proverbs 1 say? It says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. It's the beginning of wisdom. You want to be wise, you better be afraid. You better be afraid of God Almighty. He brought you into this world, and I'm sorry to have to sound like Bill Cosby, but he can take you out. Don't think that he can't. We are but what a one breath, one heartbeat away from eternity. We've seen it. We've all lost people. What happened? They seem to be healthy. Then they're gone. How long? You see, time has passed. Opportunities have abounded. But this simple, open-minded remains so. And wisdom is exasperated. How, how, really? how long? How, wh when is... The youth has grown older, but not what? Wiser. But, lest we stop it at a dark note, down note, you leave here all down, there's great opportunity for the open-minded and the simple. Turn, if you will, to Proverbs chapter 8. Verse number five. Well, verse number eight of Proverbs, or verse number one of Proverbs eight, I'm sorry. Notice the question Doth not wisdom cry? She stands on the pinnacle and in the public places, and she raises her strident voice and she screams at the top of her lungs, You simple people, when are you going to get it? 
Notice verse number five. O ye simple, understand wisdom, and ye fools, be of an understanding heart. Turn a page over to chapter 9, Proverbs 9, the first verse or first part of verse number 4, Proverbs 9, 4, the first part says, Whoso is simple, let him turn in hither. Skip down to verse 16, Proverbs 9, 16 says, Whoso is simple, let him turn in hither. What is, he, what is she getting at? What is Proverbs, which is personified here in chapter 8, chapter 9, and throughout the book of Proverbs, what is she trying to say? She's trying to say, you don't have to stay simple. You don't have to stay foolish. People often say, well, I'm just, you know, I'm just ignorant. I guess I'll stay that way. No, you don't have to be that way. Well, that's just the way I am. I come from a long line. I will admit it. I come from a long line of hard-headed. I was not going there. Thank you. I was going to say hard-headed, impatient people. But it's not my fault. My dad was, and his dad was, and I'm guessing all the way back to Adam. Just learn, it. yeah, it's my nature. I am the way I am. So accept me the way I am, right? No. You don't have to continue to be simple. You don't have to continue to be ignorant. That's exactly why Jesus came. You don't have to stay in your sin. But the open-minded have the power to be wise if they want to choose to do so. But it's a choice. I can't make you. I, might, I, I want it with every fiber of my being for everybody at Harborside Baptist Church to be wise. I can pray about it. But as we are learning in the book of James, if any man lack wisdom, have, him pa have the pastor pray for him. <laughs> Is that the way it says, what it says? It says, let him, let him personally ask of God. I can ask for, I can beg God for wisdom for everybody that I come in contact with, that I love, that I want to see wise and be successful in the Lord and go on and prosper and so forth and so on in, in the work of the Lord and the service of the Lord. But guess what? I cannot make you wise. You know why? Only God can, but you have to make the choice. I have, I'm thinking right now of two men that I know that are, I would call them friends of mine, veterans, one of, both of them of almost, one, well, one of them of, of almost 30 years, 29 years and six months. And I asked him when I first met him and I heard that and I said, why didn't you just wait six months and get 30 years in? He said, because I was done long before that. Yeah. It's like, okay, got it. Another guy who's almost 25 years in, okay, they're both lost. They don't know Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. I've talked to them personally. They're as lost as a goose in a snowstorm. And I really want to see him saved. I really do. And I can beg God, and I can go see him, and I can, I, I can pray about it, and, and I can be a testimony to him, and that kind of thing. But guess what? I can't, in all my prayers and all my desires, I cannot bring them to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. I can't make them get saved. They have to choose to do that. And the same is true when it comes to being wise. I can't make you wise. Only God can do that, but you have to ask him. You have to decide. You have to want to be wise. But the open-minded and simple are to be blamed, not for being simple, because we all start there, right? But for choosing to stay simple, to stay foolish, to stay open-minded, because wisdom is a choice. Let's look at some characteristics real quickly in the few moments before us. 
of the open-minded, the simple person. What does it look like? What do they look like? It's not just some little kid running around, little, little, little runny-nosed kid running around church, okay, who comes from a broken home and, 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 you know, got bust in and that kind of thing and doesn't know anything about anything. It's not the, the lady who came and registered her, her children for our vacation Bible school years ago, and, and she was asking me after she had her, her kids registered, she came for Sunday evening church when, when we did that, and, and somebody had invited her from our area, and she came, and she brought her children, and, and she came out of the church after the service and to take her kids to registration and stuff like that. And she goes, Pastor, what is vacation Bible school? What is that? And I explained it to her. And she said, well, well, what do you do? What do you do? I see all the decorations and I hear you talking about it and and different things. And you're going to register my kids for it and and different things. I'm guessing there'll be classes and stuff like that. But what do you do? And I said, well, we take a a week and, you know, we have a theme and, and different activities and different snacks and stuff like that. But we tell them about Jesus. And had I had dentures, they probably would have popped out of my head. Because this woman, in the, this was last century, in the 20th century America, asked me, very matter-of-factly, when I said, we teach them about Jesus, she said, who's that? And I almost didn't know what to tell her. Even in America, there are people who don't know. But they don't have to stay that way. But the characteristic of the open-minded, simple fool naive person number one if you go to proverbs 14 he's gullible just like that eight-year-old boy i was telling you about verse number 15 proverbs 14 15 says the simple the naive the open-minded believeth every word but the prudent man looketh well to his goings the gullible this simple open-minded person believes what he's told he doesn't take the time to weigh the wisdom of the words hey hold the heads of these matches on the strikers and see if you can break one okay that can't be that hard right They're careless and rash, while the prudent are careful and reserved. They're not just rushing headlong into, they're not the bull in the china shop, right? They're they're being careful. It's almost as if they're on the battlefield, because, oh, by the way, is, is not the Christian life a war? Are we not engaged in a war? We are. Are there not landmines everywhere? I can remember listening to one of my evangelist friends. He's with the Lord now, but he was a Vietnam veteran, and they would go out on different kinds of missions and, and reconnaissance missions and different stuff like that. And, and, and he said the, the, the one... Now, we, we were afraid of landmines. I mean, there's not, not a good landmine out there. Okay, he said, but the one we were especially afraid of was called a toe popper. Okay, they were camouflaged. They were plastic. They looked like the leaves in the jungle. But when you stepped on one. Okay, now it wasn't a real big thing, but it would blow your big toe off. Damage your foot. Ever try and run with a messed up ankle? Or a messed up foot. And there are landmines, are there not, in the Christian life everywhere, right? And the prudent man, 
What does he do? He's careful. He understands. I don't want to be hurt. I mean, how many of us are like me? I have a severe allergic reaction to pain. Okay? A severe allergic reaction to it. Okay? It's just like, oh, man, okay, that really hurts. Okay? But how many of us, how many of us really like pain? Then now, the, granted, there are people like that out there, okay? There's just kind of weird, right? But nobody says, hey, Lord, I really hope I get into some difficulty today. I hope I step on a landmine this morning. Nobody prays that. Nobody thinks that. Nobody wants that. But how many of us just charge headlong into wherever, we're, wherever the wind happens to blow us, we're going? Without thinking about, wait a minute, where are we going? What should we be doing? Do we really want to have these kind of problems that line our way? He only learns under the severest of conditions. Back to chapter 19, if you will. Proverbs 19, 25 says, smite a scorner, and the simple will beware. Reprove one that hath understanding, and he will understand knowledge. Look across the page there at Proverbs 21, verse number 11 says, When the scorner is punished, the simple is made wise. And when the wise is instructed, he receiveth knowledge. What does that mean? What do both of those indicate? This particular open-minded, simple, naive person will learn. You got it. He learns the hard way. Only under severe conditions. You got to stand above him with a club, and every time he raises his head, you bash him in the back of his noggin. And eventually they'll go, Man, that really hurt. Well, do your work. Get your job done. Do, hey, just, just take care. Make your bed. Do the, what, whatever it is. Just do that. Be wise. Well, I don't think I'm going to. Okay. And the dad says, here we go. Understand this. This is going to hurt me a whole lot more than it does you, but it's going to hurt. Here we go. Raise your head. (laughs) Ow, man. Do your work. Okay. Raise your head. And you keep on and on and on and on and on and on and on. And then you finally figure out after your hands are numb and your arms are tired that, oh, by the way, it's kind of like wrestling with a pig in the mud. You come to find out that the pig enjoys it. And oh, by the way, pigs are good wrestlers. And they like it. And the open-minded, naive, simple person, guess what? He likes his life the way it is. But they only learn under severe correction and conditions. He never considers the consequences. Verse 3 of chapter 22 says, A prudent man foreseeth evil. Now, granted, you have to understand what the evil is. It's those unpleasant matters that would they would best avoid. Okay? How many of you, um, how many have ever been on vacation? How many of you like to go on vacation? How many of you make plans before you go on vacation? How many of you have ever heard somebody say, we're going on vacation, and we're going to go to this particular place? It's like, wow, man, that's going to be really cool. Have you, what, what, how long are you going to be there? How long are you going to stay? Where are you going to stay? Oh, we don't know. <laughs> we're just going to drive till we get tired, and then we're going to pull off and get a motel. Okay. Um, 
And then what are you going to do? Well, we're going to bust out the next morning. We're going to drive for, you know, till we get tired on our way to wherever we're going. And, and, and when we get down there, we're going to have, we're going to, we're, we're going to see if we can get a motel. How many of you have ever come across somebody like that? Not that you've ever done it. Okay. We are like that. What's the thing that goes through your mind? They're, 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 they're very hopeful, right? Hope, you know, hope springs eternal, right? Well, do you have, do you have reservations anywhere? No. You know what's going to end up happening? You're going to get down to wherever you are and you're going to be living in your car. That's what's going to happen. You're going to be sleeping in, in, under, under the overpass in a cardboard box. That's what the simple doesn't take into consideration. The simple, they're not deficient in intelligence. Understand that. They're, they are deficient in good judgment. And we would call it, what would we call it? Common sense. Common sense. I had a roommate when I was in college. Now, this, this boy, academically... Okay, academically, he was a straight-A student from the time he was in pre-K because his parents put him in, in a Montessori school when he was four years old. From four years old to senior in college, he was getting straight A's, all right? He had a friend who was getting married the summer after he graduated. And my roommate was this guy's best man. And my roommate, who's going to be the best man of this friend of ours, says, Donnie, he's the only person that I let say that to me and get away with it. Because I was at Bob Jones University and murder is wrong. It's not just at Bob Jones, but it's, uh, you know, throughout, right? He says, Donnie, he said, I got to, I'm going to be the best man at this guy's wedding. And, 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 and um, I'm wondering um, should I have a, I've heard of these things, but I've never been to one because this is the first time I've ever been in a, a best man, but ever actually been, to, in, you know, kind of responsible for a part of the wedding and stuff like that. He said, um, what, what's a stag party, a bachelor party? I said, well, um, it's where the, the groom and the best man and, and the, you know, even sometimes the ushers and the groomsmen and stuff like that, they go off and, you know, maybe they go someplace for a few days and they, you know, they, they, they eat too much and, you know, play games and different stuff like that. And it can be, it can get pretty wild, you know, it's not a good thing. I'm not recommending it. Okay. I'm not recommending it. Okay. Um, but, um, yeah, you could, you could probably do something that would be nice you know, for him and memorable and that kind of thing. He said, well, you know, I got this idea. I said, okay, what is it? Bounce it off of me. He said, I'm thinking if we get him drunk and we take him to a motel and we get one of those girls, you know, that walks up and down, you know what I'm talking about? I said, you mean a prostitute? Well, no, 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 no. An escort. Okay, that makes it better. Okay, and 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 we t we take pictures of them, and we keep the pictures. And after they're married, I send his wife one picture a month for a period of time. Wouldn't that be cool? And I'm going. Um, okay, so let me get this straight. What you're planning on doing? is soliciting a prostitute. Oh, no, 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 no. I said, so you're hoping to find one that's just going to do this for free? And I said, I can't say for sure personally, but I'm figuring that that doesn't happen. Okay, well, I guess we would have to pay her. I said, yeah, you would. That is illegal. And I said, um, so how are you going to get him drunk? He said, well, that's why I'm asking you. <laughs> that's part of my history that we'll, we'll, leave, we'll leave dead, right? 
And I said, um, why do you think that's a good idea? He said, well, it would just be funny. It would just be funny. And I said, you know what it would lead to? Well, no. I said she would either kill him or divorce him at best. Well, no, no, we would tell her later, you know, blah, 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 blah. And I said, then it would, they would kill you. They would never find your body, right? He was so smart that he didn't have to study for college-level stuff, but he was so stupid that he thought soliciting a prostitute for whatever service was a cool idea. You see where I'm going with that. You don't have to be a rocket scientist to be wise. You don't. But open-minded, naive, simple people, they lack good judgment. They blissfully walk into difficulties without realizing the pitfalls, the toe poppers, the minefield that awaits them. And you know, the sad thing about it is there are Christian people that we know that are just like that. Isn't that a shame? But there's hope. They don't have to stay that way. I've already mentioned it. The open-minded, simple, prefer to learn from experience. Oh, let's go do it. It'll be cool. We'll learn the hard way. But they prefer to listen or to learn from experience no matter how difficult. They'd rather learn the hard way. But the Bible offers a wonderful alternative. What is it? In closing, turn to Proverbs chapter 3. Proverbs chapter 3. Notice verse 1. He says, my son, forget not my law. Now, whose law is that? That's what I used to think before I did a deep dive into this. Can you swim? Have you gone swimming in this? The law that Solomon is talking about is the law of his father. It's that parental teaching, that parental instruction. And he says, forget not my law. Let thine heart keep my commandments. What does that mean? That means pay attention and do what I tell you. Somebody asked me years ago. It must really be hard to be a pastor. I said, well, yeah, there's a burden. There's a burden for it, burden of it. <coughs> well, how would it, how would it, how could it be easier? Could it be easier? Could pastoring be easier, be made easier? And I said, yes, it could. Well, how could that happen? I said, if everybody would listen to what I say and just do what I'm telling them. It's like, well, that's kind of bold. I don't know if I really, okay, see, we got a problem now, don't we? <laughs> just do what I tell you, right? You know, the apostle Paul said, be you followers of me even as I also am of Christ. That's, that's the, 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 the thing, right? But he goes on and he says, keep my commandments for, now notice, notice the blessing, okay? Simple, naive, foolish, open-minded, for length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck. Write them upon the table of thine heart. So shalt thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God. How many of you want God's favor? Yeah. Absolutely. 
if I could raise my hands and my feet at the same time and not fall on the floor, I'd do that too. In the sight of God and man, how many of you want people to respect you, to come to you for counsel, to know that you're wise, not that you're foolish, not that you're simple. They're, they're not coming to you just to get a laugh out of you. They're not coming to you because they know that you will take on whatever responsibility and stupid little challenge that they throw out there. How many of us want people to say, the reason I come to you is because I know you will give me the right kind of counsel. It's going to be biblical. I've watched it. I've seen it in your own life. You're a good testimony of it, and that's what I want. It's better to be wise than open-minded. But the choice is yours. Let's pray. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity that we have to come together and look into your word. And we would pray, Lord, it's my prayers, their pastor. Help them to be wise. Help me to be wise. You gave Solomon the opportunity to have anything that he desired. And you told him you would give it to him. And he chose to be wise. Help us, Lord, to desire wisdom above anything else. For those that might look at their life and maybe it is that they're, they're just going on their, on their merry way. They're not concerned about the consequences. They're just going to let the chips fall wherever they may. We'll cross that bridge when we come to it. might be their mindset. May they be wise. May they consider where they're headed and turn, turn to you for direction and wisdom. May they desire to make the choice to follow wisdom and not foolishness. Work in their midst, Lord. I can only do so much for them as their pastor. Others can only do so much for them. It has to be a personal decision. May they decide it today.